Here I am at my hotel room in the capital getting ready to fly out to Guatemala in the morning. The reason why I'm going to Guatemala is to retrieve some stuff that we left there. We often get questions from people about what we should bring and what we should leave behind. And it's a really big consideration. Should you bring just the bare essentials or sh should you bring a shipping container? In our case, we brought just our backpacks and what we could carry on the plane to Guatemala from New Zealand some 14 odd months ago. But in that time, we've traveled to Nicaragua and then down to Paraguay. When we left Guatemala for Nicaragua, we had accrued some additional stuff to what we had actually brought from New Zealand. And we had to make the difficult decision as to what we did with that stuff. We wanted to travel light to Nicaragua because we weren't sure as to how long we'd be staying there. So we decided to leave some excess gear in Guatemala with the view that we would retrieve that somehow, whether it would be by getting it freighted down or by going and retrieving it. As it turned out, we spent several months in Nicaragua and then traveled down to Paraguay where we are now. We've turned our mind to how we're going to get our stuff from Guatemala. Well, as it turns out, it's not that simple to freight stuff from Guatemala or Latin America, Central America to South America. In fact, it's really complicated, expensive, and not something that you really wanna do unless you have no other option. In our case, we don't have too much to bring back. So thankfully we could grab a cheap flight, take some extra bags and go and retrieve it ourselves, which I'm intending to do in the next few days. But I thought this video would be useful because there are people out there who really are thinking about what to bring, what to leave behind when they move to another country. And our situation is perhaps instructive in terms of the complications that can happen if you move to one place, but you decide that that place isn't for you. Not just inter-country, but also within a country. If you were to move to one part of Paraguay and then decide that you wanted to take an entire shipping container worth of stuff to another location, you could do it, but it'd be just complicated. And it's just something that everybody needs to think about. I have seen some people get themselves in a bit of a pickle because sometimes you just can bring too much stuff. In our case, we took a minimalist approach, but we've still got stuck in a situation where we've got some stuff that we've got to retrieve. So everyone to their own, these videos are just about having the conversation, showing how we get on and everyone makes their own way in life. But for what it's worth, come along with me, going to the beautiful part of Guatemala, which is Antigua, where I'm staying, and hopefully we'll have some fun along the way and hopefully I'll stay out of trouble. So let's see how that turns out. Okay, let's go. Well, what a ride. So here I am in Antigua, uh, arrived last night, hit Guatemala City and got a, uh, a cab down to here. What a beautiful place this is. We spent a few days here when we were in Guatemala, but uh, coming back here, it just reminds me of just how amazing this place is. Just this amazing intact, beautiful colonial Spanish gem. The UN are all over it. Apparently they've put some sort of protection thing on it that the UN tend to do but what's really keeping this place going is just the tourism. Last night I popped out to have something to eat and you couldn't find a place on the footpath. There's just people everywhere and from all parts of the world there's heaps of French, Germans, Americans, you name it. A lot of weddings and uh... Hola man! Si si! I come back in a minute. Luego. Si, si. Um, and uh, it's just the most amazing place. Cafes and beautiful restaurants. So if you're ever thinking about coming to Guatemala, where well, you can't, you can't miss this place. And I'd classify Antigua as being in the same sort of category as places like Granada and Leon in Nicaragua. Some of the absolute Spanish gems of the world and thankfully they've been kept intact because of definitely the tourism but also because you know these countries haven't had a lot of money to do anything else so these places are all functional a lot of these places are actual people's homes that they've had for generation on generation so it's not only beautiful and authentic buildings but there's some real authenticity in the way that people live here too 
Hey, what isn't there to like about this place? But check this out. Behind me. These places were built like hundreds of years ago and they're still standing strong. There's been earthquakes and this place has got a big volcano that's sitting right next to it. So it has regular shakes and rattles, but these buildings are pretty much bomb proof. So I'm a bit of a geek for this style of old building. They had so many amazing techniques that we need to rediscover. Yeah, it's pretty labor intensive, but they only have to make them once. I got all my stuff delivered to me by my good friend sitting back in the hotel. So my big job is to go through it all and decide what's in and what's out. So that's gonna be a bit of fun. It was like being reunited by old friends, seeing all of the stuff that we had bought, a lot of it from New Zealand and some of it we got since we were in Guatemala. So that's gonna be a bit of a emotional exercise to work out what we take and what we leave behind. We'll get there. It's gonna be interesting to see how much weight I can carry in my bags without being over the limit, but that's gonna be the next adventure. In the meantime, I'm just so enjoying being back in Antigua. Staying at a beautiful little hotel there. If anyone ever comes to Antigua and they're looking for somewhere to stay, I'll put a link. It's like $70 US for two nights, which is pretty amazing value, I think, particularly for Antigua. And it's a beautiful little like Airbnb sort of place. And even though it gets really busy here of a night, one of the cool things is that at around, I think it was around 11.30, 12 o'clock, every, everything just went quiet. So they obviously have noise control, which is really cool because one of the features when you come to Latin and South America is noise. I had a really great sleep and uh, just really appreciated the whole experience of coming here. It's been, it's been worth, I just wish that the family were here because we all really enjoyed Antigua. Once we get settled, I'd like to do more of it. I understand there's some more beautiful places obviously all around, all around South and Central. So uh, we'll have to uh, get in there and see what other gems are around. But uh, this is the main square as you can see and this is hardly anything compared. Last night, it was just smashing. You couldn't, you couldn't find space hardly to stand. Last time we were here, there were quite a few people, but now, man, there's just people everywhere. And it's a double-edged sword. A lot of people say, oh, it's too much tourism and spoils the experience and all the rest of it. That's on one side of it, but on the other side, they wouldn't be able to afford to upkeep this place if they didn't have all this tourism. And the people that are coming here obviously got money. Like, there's no question about it. So that money's really flowing into the community and flowing into these buildings. Because although they're beautiful, they do cost a bit to upkeep, particularly the roofs. You know, those tiled roofs have to be redone. That wouldn't be cheap. And then the timber that supports them. So. There is upkeep in these old places for sure and we have seen some places around in our travels, some towns that are just really just falling down. So tourism has really kept this place going and, and keeps, it, keeps it funded to keep it in the condition that it is now. Wherever you look, there's just a scene. It's just so beautiful. It's the other thing here in Antigua, the food is just amazing. And uh, it's hard not to come across a really beautiful cafe. The coffee's really amazing. Guatemala, obviously, it's one of the world's best coffee growing regions. And the cafes here, oh, coffee's just incredible. I'm sure when Brenda sees this video, she'll be going, oh, why didn't you take me? But <laughs> someone had to come. But it was uh, definitely a bit of a mission to get here. So, you know, these things have their rewards. I've got today to sort out all my stuff, all of our stuff, and then to cram it all into suitcases, try and get it under the required rates. And tomorrow, head back to 
Guatemala City and fly out. So that's my next big adventure. Really glad to be home with my 89 and a half kilos of trash and treasure and whatever else we've tended to accumulate. And I guess it's just been a good lesson for us and perhaps it's something that people need to think about when they're moving to another country is what do they bring? Even with our minimalist approach, we did get ourselves in a situation where we had stuff scattered from Paraguay to Guatemala and it's been a bit of a mission to reunite us with our stuff and so it would have been all the much worse if we had bought a full shipping container or more. So everyone's different, everyone's got their own way of doing things, but I think the important thing is just to be aware of the reality of these situations and just to have a plan as much as you can. When I landed about four o'clock in the morning, I groggily approached the passport counter, gave the lady my passport, and she asked if I was a tourist or whether I was there on business. And I said, no, look, I, I'm a temporary resident and proceeded to give her my cedula. And she paused and then looked up with a big, beautiful smile and said, you know, you're not a temporary resident. You're a permanent resident. And I'll be honest with you, it almost brought a tear to my eye. It was just like I haven't had that experience before going into any country where I felt so welcome to be there. I looked at her and said, I love Paraguay and she laughed her head off and gave me a big thumbs up and she said number one and you know it was just a really nice moment went through customs without a drama and walked into the foyer and then my taxi driver who I know from Kakupe and who we had booked to pick me up flew through the door as soon as we uh, saw each other he ran up to me and gave me a hug like I was his long lost friend and after our reunion I pushed my trolley out into the car park and as I was going towards the cab, one of my bags rolled off the trolley and a young guy who was walking into the airport did a 180, ran back to where I was, helped me with my bag back onto my trolley, loaded all my stuff into the taxi and you know, I just sat there as we drove off and I just thought it's so good to be home and it, it's those sort of things that just make me just love this country. It was so great to be back in Paraguay. That's my big adventure from Paraguay to Guatemala and then back to Paraguay. I'm glad to be home, glad to have been able to bring all of our stuff with us and looking forward to kicking on and on to our next adventure. Take care. Ciao.